Well, my name is, my, my initiated name is Branca Lali, uh, and that means maidservant of the Gopis of Vindavan. I live in La Crosse, Florida. I lived in California for 30 years and went to Poland and ended up in Alachua in La Crosse. I have three daughters, uh, 21, 15, and nine. And right now my 15 year old is a real challenge. <laughs> She's normal. Um, let's see. My husband's name is Raja Kumar. Um, we've known each other on and off for the last 20 years and just sort of hooked up about five years ago. Um, and I love it here. I think I found a little piece of paradise. Um, well, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. That was my home base. My mother traveled around a lot. She was married five times, so she was here and there and everywhere. And every time she wanted to play mom, she'd come and grab me out of my grandparents and take me wherever she was. And I'd always end up back in Cincinnati home. Um, I grew up Southern Baptist. I loved church. I was um, a devout Christian. Uh, we'd go back, my family's from the, the hills of Kentucky up in the Appalachian area. And we'd go up there and I'd see, I'd go to these really weird churches where they handle snakes and they talk in tongues and it would totally freak me out. But yet I took a little bit of that because I, as I got older, I would think, well, what faith? What stupidity? <laughs> What's what faith? I mean, I think it's pretty stupid to handle a snake today. But, but it was interesting to be able to be exposed to all that. And I hung on to that Southern Baptist religion until I was in high school. And then I started experimenting. Um, I left home at 17. And I, I lived um, kind of a, a vagabond life. Like, I was a hippie. Um, and I got into a lot of esoteric kinds of things. I got into a lot of pagan ritual and religion. I was really attracted to the Catholic Church because of the ritual. I didn't realize it at the time, but that's what really attracted me is ritual. I, I've always had a really strong sense of spirit. I've always known that there's something more than me. I've always known that God is there. I was, there were times in my life I wasn't sure if God was male or female, and then I came to the realization that God is androgynous. <laughs> you know, that took a while to get it. Um, and I was married and had a child, was, had, a, had a very happy, peaceful existence in Glen Ellen, California. Um, had a children's clothing store, tended bar at night, but was peaceful. It was really, my husband was a truck driver, race car driver, just really normal life, middle class. And then my husband and son were killed in a car accident together. And it rocked my world. My whole world being fell apart. I went crazy. Nuts. And I quit religion. I quit God. God didn't quit me. I quit God. I stopped. And I became a holy terror. I didn't care. I had a death wish. As survivors go, I, I, I see that now. And I also suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I went on long in life like a puppet. I didn't care. I really didn't care. And I got involved with the Hells Angels. And I got married to a Hells Angel. And it was an interesting life. It was really, he was a very, probably one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. He had quite a few businesses, properties. I got, had, became pregnant, had a daughter, and woke up. And just looked around and went, this isn't what I want in my life. This isn't how I want to raise my child. The maternal instinct came back. And, and you know, I, until my daughter was about five years old, I kept thinking she was going to die. This is too good to be true. She, this, you know, I can't get it happiness. I mean, I was just really, really screwed up in my head. And then I left him and I moved to Marin County. That was, I lived up in Sonoma County, California. And I moved down to Marin County, California. And... Um, I was still partying pretty hard, 
still live in a pretty loose lifestyle, bartended, um, was raising my daughter, had a house. Uh, and I met this guy who was strung on heroin, this Italian guy. And he'd come to the bar where I worked and he didn't have any money, but he had a brand new Harley. And then one day I went on a bike ride with him. We were friends. We became really good friends. And I went on a motorcycle ride with him and he took me to his house. And it was this million dollar house. And I'm going, this guy can't even afford a sandwich. I was buying his food for him. I felt sorry for him. And he has this million dollar house. Well, then it scared me. And I went, well, I don't want to get involved here. I just left the Hells Angels. I don't want to get involved with mafia or something like that. That's what kept coming to my mind. And I, you know, and he pursued me and we ended up being together and getting married, having two children and getting clean and sober and having a, a, a really pretty good life. And I got in touch with God and I joined the Catholic Church. I went through the, a year, uh, you have to go through a year program and, and got married in the Catholic Church. Had a 350 people at my wedding, just really got involved, really immersed. But I talked to the priest and he was this little Irish Catholic priest and I had all these questions, especially from my pagan days. But, but why? But how? But Father Healy, I don't understand this. And finally, he'd get really frustrated with me. And he'd go, Linda, me dear. That's my Carmi name. Linda, me dear, there are just mysteries I just can't answer for you. And that wasn't good enough. And I'd go to the health food store, and I'd buy this Back to Godhead magazine. And I'd look at the pictures. I didn't understand it. And I'd look at the pictures, and I'd go, wow, this looks really cool. And, you know, then I'd put it down and forget about it. But I... I you know, I had like a Shiva deity. I didn't know what a deity was at that time, but I had a Shiva deity on my dresser and I had a Ganesh and, you know, I was attracted to this worship, but I didn't realize I was attracted at that time. I just thought it was cool. And um, my husband started using again and he became abusive to my older daughter, the one that wasn't his, and it wasn't acceptable. And he had owned this house before I married him, but my name was on the deed, and I was the one that always worked. And he had, I called him Trustafarians. He was born into money and never worked. And um, that's my word for it. And in Marin County, California, there's a lot of those. There's a lot of Trustafarians. Um, and I, we split up. I made him leave, and he was angry because he got kicked out of his house. But he touched my daughter, and it wasn't okay. And it got really hellish. It got really hellish. Then I started using it again, numbed out. And then life fell apart. And then I went to court. His family had a lot of money and yada, 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 yada. And they kicked the children and me out of the house. The judge made, first of all, the judge made me quick claim my part of the house. That's unheard of. My attorney wasn't present. He was in New York, had to get another attorney to come in, tried to get a continuance. They wouldn't continue it. And while my attorney wasn't present, forced me to quit claim my part of the house. I didn't believe that could happen in America, but it did. I still had faith. I was using, I was messed up. I was distraught, but I still had faith. And, um, came down to the wire and my children and I were thrown out on the street. These are his kids. Three days later, Child Protective Services came and took my children. I'm staying at my friend's house, saying I was neglectful because I didn't have a home. It's, it's a totally unbelievable story. It's for real. It really happened because it happened to me. Um, I fell apart. I fell apart, went back into my post-traumatic stress disorder dysfunction uh, and lost two years. Completely lost years, lived on the street, uh, picked up a Back to God had magazine in this magazine. It said, if you chant Hare Krishna every day for 15 minutes, your life will change. Well, I did that. My life didn't change. You know, when, you, when, you, when you're a person like me, you want instant gratification. Um, threw it down, went, says not work. But I fought for my children. I fought, I go to court, I show up my court dates. Um, I fought, I fought, I ended up going through a recovery process. I lived in a little tent on a hill, would go to these day meetings every day, was clean and sober again, got a place in the ghetto. The county helped me get a place in this uh, really horrible neighborhood, especially if you're in recovery. It was tough. It was the worst place I've ever lived in my life. And so I brought my children into this hell. 
And life was, I had my kids. I got my kids back, which no one thought would happen, but I did it. I did it. And I looked around and I promised my kids one year, one year and we're out of here. And what I was going to do is I was going to go up to Mendocino and grow pot medicinal marijuana. I had done that in the past and I thought I can make money. I don't, never did smoke pot. I don't like smoke. Um, and I thought I can do that. Then I can pull us out of this fine and we can be all right. That was my plan, but Krishna had a different plan. And my boyfriend who had, who had, we had come to know each other on the street, but we had known each other 20, 20 years before when he had money and I had money and, and he was kind of one of those trust Trafarians, but his money got, he got exploited by an accountant. And, and when I was on the street, he helped me. He brought me socks. He brought me food. And we hooked up. Well, we're in Marin City, California, in the ghetto, trying to live. He doesn't want to get clean. I want to get clean. And I'm, I'm worried about him because I'm going to leave. I'm going to Mendocino. I'm, I'm getting out. And he didn't want to come. So I found out he had this brother that was a Swami. I didn't know what a Swami was. And, you know, he couldn't figure out what his name was. It was Indra Swami Maharaj. And it's real hard to spell that when you're loaded. You can't figure out how to spell Indra Swami. So we tried to find him on the internet. And finally one night about two o'clock in the morning, I found him and I emailed him and told him that his brother was suicidal, that I was his girlfriend and I wanted out. And I was, I had to take my children, but I couldn't just leave them because you know, I loved him. He was, and he was my best friend. Within two hours, I had an email back from Poland from his brother, thanking me, telling me I'm an angel. He's been looking for his brother for 10 years. Couldn't find him, thought he was dead, had had a private detective looking for him. But, you know, when you're on the street, nobody can find you if you don't want to be found. It's a whole different society. And within five weeks, we were in Poland with the devotees. He got, we, we got passports. We got expedited, all this stuff. Maharaj brought us, to, not knowing me, not knowing my children, he knew that my husband would not come with us. He didn't want to go anyway. He was real resistant. And I told him that I was going, this is my way out of the ghetto. This is my ticket out with my kids. I'm going. And I know once I get there, my life's going to change. I had that. I had a feeling that this man held a key to something I've been looking for all my life. It makes me teary. Um, we got to Poland, and my, my, my daughter, who's 15 now, was 12 then, 13, and she was tough. She lived in the ghetto. I mean, she was tough. She was a white girl in a black neighborhood, and she had to be, she, she got real tough. And she gets off the plane with her little hat on and her little gangster attitude, you know. Within 12 hours, Maharaj and Jadu Swami had her in a sari up on stage in front of 400,000 people at Woodstock in Poland chanting Hare Krishna. She had acne real bad. Within two weeks, her face was like a baby's butt. <laughs> um, and she was smiling. My nine-year-old was is Maharaj's sidekick now. She does puja, worships the deities. She does, and she's, he brought her to California this year and my husband. She got straight A's, and that was her reward. And she got to serve all these sannyasis, and she was all excited. I mean, but my daughter gets off the plane, and she sees these guys dressed in their, their dhotis, and she goes, oh, Mom, what have you done? And I go, what? She goes, they got dresses on. What are we going to do? <laughs> I swear, it was hysterical. It was funny. And I'm going, oh, what have I done? <laughs> what have I done? And it just, I mean, it took a matter of hours for us to go into this world where it, it, in, the, in the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita, it talks about dancing and chanting and, and how it's a party, it's a festival every day. Well, that's what we lived in Poland for four weeks. And the devotees just loved us whole. And you have to understand, we were detoxing. And it was bad, <laughs> you know, it was bad, especially for my husband. He was like, whoa, in bad shape. Um, but they loved us whole. They fed us prashadam holy food. And I was, I'd read and I'd go and I'd talk to Maharaj and I, I had questions and there was a, a woman devotee there who just sort of, she was a recovering addict and she just took us under her wing 
I'm sure Maharaj had a little bit to do with her associating with us, but he told us that he did not want us to go back to California because he knew what would happen if we went back to California. It'd be the same old thing. You know, sometimes a geographic isn't a cure, but it's real helpful. Um, so he sent us to Alachua. Actually, he convinced my nine-year-old, who was then I seven, six, six or seven, um, seven. And he convinced my children to leave everything they had, which wasn't much. We didn't have much at that time. Um, they just came out of foster care. And they left everything. We left everything. We just had like a couple of changes of clothes. And we came from Poland to Alachua. And the devotees just picked us up. And, you know, I got a job. We got a job. I mean, and then Maharaj brought my husband to India and came back. I mean, it's, it's a very simple lifestyle. But my heart is so full of, Lord, of the Lord. And I had to go back to California two times for court. And I lost, you have to understand, I lost every case when it came to money because he had relatives in the court system. And that really, that's, unfortunately, that's the way it is here in America. It is, it's who you know, how much money you have, and it works. Um, but this time I had Krishna. And there's a, a, an expansion of Krishna called Lord Nishringadev. And I, I prayed to Lord Nishringadev, which is still Krishna, it's all God the same person it's just a different expansion and I went into court and I prayed and I prayed and I felt this shadow coming to the courtroom and my ex-husband was there and he's pretty evil <laughs> I mean somebody kicks their kids out and just lets them go into foster care is pretty bad and the courts wouldn't let him have them because he was uh, it's, that was then now it's now so anyway I'm in court and I feel this presence and I'm looking around and there's no one there. And I'm looking at my attorney and said, do you feel that? He goes, yeah. My attorney's an atheist, by the way, who's been here to visit. So I knew that Lord Nishringade was in that courtroom. That's when I flipped around. That's when I knew. I won the case. It was the first one I won. And I knew. And I looked to Krishna and I just went, thank you. Because he tore him apart. And I came back a whole different person. And it's just been nothing but mercy, I believe. I still have my old belief systems. I mean, I still, you know, I take what I need and I leave the rest, if that makes sense. And it's the most wonderful experience I've ever had. And I want to hold on to it for the rest of my life. I don't want to ever lose this. And it's... It's amazing. I have a good life. Very, like it's very simple, austere, but yet very full. And I'm very happy. A lot of people, I mean, most of the people in this movement, you know, they don't have TV. They don't, well, I haven't given up my material, my, my, all my material. I have my TV. I have my cable, you know, I still drink coffee. Um, but otherwise, I come to class. I love it. I love chanting. Chanting is my most favorite thing in this whole thing because it gives me a peace and I feel a direct con connection with God when I chant. And that's kind of my story. Yeah, the, the Lord in the <laughs> went with Prahlad Maharaj where this little boy, do you want me to tell them? Okay. Well, this little boy, is, uh, his father is a demon. And his father, you know, and this and this little boy Prahlad, he's he's you know he's he's a devotee, he's a pure devotee of the Lord. And his father doesn't like the fact that he worships the Lord. And he's like, you know, he's going to kill him. He's going to cut off his head. He wants these guys to just off him, you know. And so the little boy's going, okay, whatever, you know, blah 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 blah. And he's praying to Krishna, and he's going, you know, please help my father do this, do that. Well, the father's coming down, and he's going to have the little boy killed. And he made this deal with Brahma. Um, I prob I may not be getting the names right because I real I knew this. <laughs> you know, I knew these these names, but he made a deal with Brahma, and that he couldn't be killed. There was there's only one way that he could be killed, 
you couldn't, you know, you couldn't come face on, you couldn't come sideways, you couldn't come backwards. Well, Lord Nisringadev appeared because Prahlad was his devotee. And he appeared as Lord Nisringadev, the lion. And he came out of a, of a, of a column. He just appeared, expanded, and he just tore the guts out of this guy. And it, it, it's, a, it's a cool story. It is. It's a cool story. But he was this big, bad, you know, I see him as a big, bad biker kind of guy, you know, and he just tears. But what happened with Kalat is his father got mercy because he was touched by the Lord. So he went straight to Godhead. And I mean, that's how the Lord works. You know, you may get torn up a little bit, but you, but you still get the mercy of the Lord. The Lord still loves you. And that's my favorite. That's my favorite story. I'm not telling it right, I'm sure, but it's still, you get the gist of it. You know, when I was a very small child, and I'd lay out in the grass and look at the clouds and the pictures in the clouds, I knew there was a cloud. Yeah. I'm an incest survivor. I burned a lot of karma. <laughs> um, when that happened to me, when that happened to me, God got me through it. Yeah. Everything. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be able to have the ability to preach. Not to go, I mean, I'm not a preacher, a preacher, but to be able to tell my story. It's, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> it's not boring. but um, And to be able to sit here and smile and mean it because my heart is so full of love. And I'm grateful that I'm not angry anymore. It's been lifted. I have no hate and no anger. A little resentment, but no hate and no anger. I've got, that's something I've got to work on. That's okay. That's okay. Peace. Peace. That everybody can feel the love of God in their hearts. Which everybody feels the love of God in their hearts. I would like them to know that I care. That I care deeply. I have one more point that I, that I just sort of want to bring up. Remember way back when I said that I picked up the Back to Godhead magazine and I chanted? I chanted every day for five days, for 15 minutes a day. I chanted Hare Krishna. And I wanted instant gratification. I didn't get the instant gratification, but it came. It came in God's time. I just sort of wanted it. Thank you very much. Thank you.